one tonight. Not here to make any excuses. I um, definitely did the same. Um, just, you know, my time was off and uh, I was going to capitalize on a couple of things. And, um, you know, his time was a lot better than mine tonight. Timing was off was, is a fucking understatement. But I... Turn it over to the media for questions. For Errol Spence Jr., raise your hand yep. and wait until you get the microphone. Right back there. Hey, Errol. Andreas here from the Sporting News. Errol, how was the weight cut for this fight? And I wanted to follow that with the second question. If the rematch had to be at 47, I know you said you don't want to be there again. Are you willing to do this rematch back at welterweight? No. Um, it's <clears throat> something I got to talk to my management about, but um, hopefully it's at uh, 154. How was this particular weight cut? Was it a very... 154, 354, no 54. No, I don't want it. Very difficult one, or did you feel at ease with the weight cut? I mean, it's always difficult, but, um, you know, like I said, I don't make any excuses. The better man won tonight. One last question. What about Terrence surprised you the most? Was it his timing, his power? What surprised you? Uh, nothing really surprised me. Um, he was just like I... N nigga, Terrence ain't so fucking surprised us, nigga. That nigga surprised us. You surprised us, nigga. You should say you surprised yourself. It just, um, my timing wasn't, wasn't good today. Nigga, keep talking about his timing. Yo, you hear this? Nigga, keep talking about his timing. Bro, the whole, your fight, the, you, nigga. Everything. Questions for Errol Spence Jr. Hey, Errol, uh, Keith Heideck from BoxingScene.com. What, what do you attribute your timing not being there to? Did you feel off physically yeah, or anything? Yeah, the fuck did you talk what about? Was wrong in the fight? Oh yeah. no, <laughs> he knocked your he knocked your equilibrium your 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 equilibrium off in the second round. So your timing was off, dude. I right, I okay, say that then, nigga, because you capping right now, boy. Uh, felt a little off physically, but. Most times I get I get through it, so it you know I thought it was gonna be just like the other times, but um you know I couldn't kick it up a notch. Bro, he don't get yo he gets no sympathy from me. I lost money. You don't get no sympathy. When a nigga lose money, ain't yo there's no. Sympathy Errol Sam involved. Gordon here with the Las Vegas Review Journal. Um, how would you contextualize or describe Terrence's power, and when did you really get a feel for it for the first time tonight? Um. I got feel for his power. The second round when he got dropped, dumbass questions. What the fuck? Probably like first, second round. Um, you know, he's a strong hey, there dude. There we go. He being honest. You know, there we go. At this top level, have some type of power, but um, I think because <clears throat> my time was out, he was catching me in between shots. Errol, uh, Kevin Ioli from Yahoo Sports. My question would be, your face was swelling up really badly. Were you having difficulty seeing as the fight progressed? Uh, no. No, I wasn't having difficulty seeing it all. I'm, I'm sorry. What? I said no, I, I didn't have difficulty seeing it all. Okay. And then lastly, did you feel when the fight started, like did you feel good or did you feel like it was, you know, maybe one of those nights? Um, I feel cool. I thought, you know, I, I could um, you definitely do enough me. to, uh, you felt to win cool. the fight, but I feel good. And like I said, I'm not here to, to make any excuses. I'm a grown man. Um, I decided to agree to the weight and get down to it, and that's what I did. So, take no, no excuses. Hats off to the champion tonight. Harold, right. straight back. Dan Raphael from Big Fight Weekend. I wanted to know... Uh, I know you, it's only a few minutes removed from the end of the fight. How do you Damn, think yeah. you're going to deal with this going forward, tomorrow, next week? Are you the kind of guy that's going to just bad night, shake it off, and all is good? Or are you going to, you know, stew over this for a while? No, he need to get back in the gym and find a new opponent. For a while, and it's get in a new weight class because he's not beating that nigga. It's going to hurt bad. <laughs> uh, nah, I'm not going to stew over it all. Um, I did out what I was um, supposed to do, regardless of. Yeah, yo, you see how the yo, you see how the public just just a change on a nigga after that nigga lose. I mean, I ain't changing on no, them, but like, like you see how my mentality is different. Like I'm treating this nigga like he the ops now. Like you lost money out my pocket. Like you, 
and I'm not betting on you again if you fight him again. Not after what I just saw. You know, the outcome or anything like that. I'm so stressed I'm rolling up again. Like that, like I said, I was going to do something. And I promised everybody I was going to do it. So I did it as a man. I stood up on my words. So I'm definitely not going to uh, soak over this. I'm going to get right back and uh, get to it. I don't it. know about many of your words. 154 pounds. And uh, Errol, even though, I mean, we know how big of a fight this was. Everybody talked about the historical significance of this fight all through the buildup, all for the last several years as we waited for it to happen. I wonder if it's happened, you go on the losing side of this one. Can you, can you, does it at least give you some solace to know that you gave the boxing public something that they have wanted for so long, even though obviously it didn't go your way? Uh, definitely, definitely. It was exciting. I hope they will up to it. And leading up to it too, so it's something that I did not see this. And I coming. wouldn't, I wouldn't change for nothing. And um, I'm definitely open to the to the rematch, and uh, hopefully it'll be at 154 pounds. Hey, thanks a lot, guys. Morgan Campbell from the New York Times. This question is for Derek or for Errol. Um, once Bud won a couple rounds and he started to get the momentum, what types of tactical adjustments did you guys want to be able to make? So um, just really kind of like do our best to take away what he was doing instead of kind of standing in front of him. But I think that Errol, like you can notice, well, I can notice his time was off really bad and he was standing in front of him. So I think that um, that's kind of was, was the thing. It was just the timing Yo, reaction. What is with them in his timing shit? They getting me tight. Oh, like. The time was a little slower. But it's okay. It's like life and come back you deal with it and you get better in the rematch at 154 pounds that the result would be any different who are you talking to Errol say it again I just wondered what aspects of the performance tonight give you confidence that you could change the result even at 154 not a goddamn thing it is not a goddamn thing he did good in this fight tonight that would give him some fucking confidence about fighting him not a goddamn thing about it. the only thing is him walking in the ring and being a man that's it the fuck yo why these niggas be yo these niggas i ain't gonna lie i be wanting to fight the reporters these niggas be asking some dumb ass questions i'm not even gonna go hold you um because because <clears throat> i know i'm i'm a lot better than uh what i showed tonight and um i know that a lot of things was off with me and uh even though Terrence probably did what nah, he was like, supposed to do. You know how, like, I right, you, I right, look, right? So, you know how, like, you watch a fight and, like, a nigga just seem like he just don't fight. He not fighting the way he usually fight or maybe or, or again, he not playing like he usually play. Like, maybe, like, LeBron not being as aggressive as he usually will be or maybe Steph not shooting as much threes as he usually shoot. That's not the case with this nigga, Okay. He came in that fight looking like himself. And even through the fight, while he's getting pieced up, because I watch, I watch majority of Arrow's fights, so I know. He looked the same, I, just like any other fight. I'm like, bro, I've seen him hurt before. He going to get right, and he going to start backing him down. Yo, he, yo, Terrence is just so much better than that nigga, bro. It's just not, he can't do nothing with him. He can't, yo, if they fight again and Errol beats this nigga, that would be like the greatest fucking comeback ever. Like, like, come on, bro. Like, this, these are going to be the greatest fights ever. This is going to be like the greatest trilogy ever. If Errol come back and beat this man after getting his ass beat like this, the trilogy going to be crazy. But I don't think it's that. I just think the skill level is just on two completely different playing fields. Two complete, like, Spence was looking like Spence, and Croft was looking like Croft, and look what happened. Sharp, and he was on point, and he made sure he was 100% ready in his fight. Andrew Jones, easy, ESPN, and Anscape. For first, for Errol, I want to ask you what did Derrick James say to you in terms of supporting you after the fight and how loyal he's been to you and is this officially your last fight at 147 
in your mind? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I guess the press conference um camera went out. I don't know why the shit black. Well, I guess the camera went out. I'm reading the comments and shit. My mind is my last fight at 147 pounds, so you know, hopefully the next one be at 154. Yeah, but um, man. Derek, you know, just t- just told me that you know, keep my head up. You know, I was off and um, you know, trying to cut. Yeah, man. And you, like the the night started off good because I was betting on UFC. Why they had, I guess they I don't know why they do that, man. They had two big fights in two different you know, well same type of sport, two different sports, but two big fights like streaming at the same time. Like what the fuck was that? So I'm betting on UFC and shit, and I'm gotta watch boxing at the same time as I'm watching UFC. Dana White need to get that together He knew that this fight was coming along This UFC shit Nah but this UFC shit is every week But he could have pushed it back a week Come on this this was a a big fight He probably lost viewership Just because of that You know what I mean But yeah shit was starting off good Went to Fair Duel You know placed my little bets Um, Derek Lewis um, I put him in one of my parlays. He came out, got the knockout, got the TKO in like, what, a minute? Flying knee, caught him. Started wilding him up. I'm like, oh, it's lit. Um, Kevin Holland. Kevin Holland fought. I put him on one of my legs, too. He came out, got the dub. Shit was looking good. Shit was looking good. I put a couple um, over rounds, over, you know. I sprinkled that in there Shit was looking alright And then I don't know man Shit just Feel me I put a I put You know Dusty Poirier to win Against Gagey And he got knocked the fuck out He got knocked The fuck out And it was crazy because I'm in FanDuel and I'm placing the bet And I'm just like Nah ain't no way Cause I fuck with Gaethje I fuck with Gaethje too But I'm like Nah ain't no way Cause Dustin beat his ass the first time Feel me Dustin won the first fight But You know something was just telling me Dustin tonight Like I ain't think Dustin I'm like yo Ain't no And I said this too I said Ain't no way um, Dustin gonna get knocked out by this nigga Ain't no way So I'm like Alright you know what Let me just put Dustin on there KOs him. Kick to the head, kick, kick to the back temple. He fake blocked it a little bit, but a, a little bit slipped through. Bang, gone. Put him out. So two fighters who I thought were gonna definitely win. Oh no, three. Hold on. I'm forgetting about the Yan versus um Alex Pereira. I'm thinking because, you know, all right, this is how I'm thinking for that fight, right? Alex just fought Izzy, right? He beat Izzy the first time, right? But Izzy came back and beat him the second time, right? So he's coming off a loss, right? And then the Yan dude beat Izzy. Feel me? He beat his ass type shit. Feel me? Submitted him like, oh, nah, I think he won by points, but he was just like dominating him. The whole fight You know what I'm saying And like What I know is like Izzy is a more well-rounded fighter Than Alex He's just more well-rounded So I'm saying So I'm thinking to myself You know Alex and Izzy in the same weight class He's a more well-rounded fighter So you know If on the ground Izzy should be better But Izzy got dominated So I'm like Okay Alex don't got As much talent As Izzy on the ground So maybe you know, um, Yan should dominate him. I put it. I put him. I put on a parlay under two and a half rounds. You know, Yan to win. Um, I, I was thinking about putting a submission, but I was like, nah. Let me let me not do that. Let me not get too happy. But I'm like, I right, bet Yan to win because of that. But I mean, the fight was pretty close. But in my eyes, um, Yan was leading. He was controlling the fight the whole time. Now there were certain moments where they stood up, and you because Jan is not um, quite the striker as Alex. Alex was catching him with some shit, 
And I think the significant strikes just weighed more than the the control time that Jan had on Alex on the ground. It just it just it just it weighed more with the judges. And he won by split decision, you know? That fight could have really went either way though. Could have went either way. But I was sure um Jan was gonna win. I was sure. Just like I was sure about Dustin. And I was sure about fucking Errol. And I was fucking wrong. And lost my fucking money. But that's the game. That's the game, man. That's the game, you know what I mean? On to the next. Um, I can't wait to see. I can't wait to see that Devin Haney and Shakur Stevenson. And... The Shakur and I feel like the 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 odds are gonna be like, wait, are the odds gonna be like the Croft and Spence fight? Because I feel like Haney, Haney's the draw. Haney's the biggest fighter, but I feel like he'll be the yeah yeah. He'll be he'll be the underdog. Yeah yeah yeah. Because Spence is the bigger fighter, like as far as popularity, putting butts in the seat. He's a bigger fighter than Croft, but he was the underdog, so. Devin Haney is a bigger fighter than Shakur Stevenson, but I feel like he might be the underdog on the odds. You feel me? So that's gonna be a great, great, great fight to see. Um, I hope and pray that you know we get to see this fight soon because this is a fight that we need to see soon. Um, I hope that you know they don't wait fucking three, five, ten, whatever. Like at they wait long, it's just gonna. Take the fun out of it. It's going to be whack. Niggas not going to, like, you know what I mean? Somebody got to win. Somebody got to lose. Everybody can't go undefeated. I'm sorry. Arrow just took his first L. He's still going to be an all-time great. But everybody can't be floored. Everybody can't go undefeated. You feel me? And maybe one day, you know, maybe Tank, maybe Tank will meet his match. Maybe Tank will catch a L. Let's see if Tank is a... It's a Floyd, you know what I mean? But everybody can't be Floyd. There's only one Floyd. There's only one undefe- undefeated professional boxer ever in, in the sport, like, and that is Floyd. So. Let's see. I wonder who Tank fight next, though. That'll be... That's the sight I want to see. Well, that's it's Tank. Everybody wants to see Tank fight. Everybody wants to see Tank fight. But yeah, man. I wanted to see if uh if Croft got up here. Console. And okay, maybe. What's going and on we'll with this, um, um, camera. See, for me, I see his legs. Okay, we back. Little... Okay, we back with the cam. Uh, pound. Body through the. Mm-hmm. It was different, this fight. You know, we did a pre-camp, came out to Vegas, stayed for a month, you know, so I've been working for a long time.